Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have a lot of people uh, asked me about the indirect bonding technique that I posted about on my Instagram. And in this video, I would like to explain to you and share with you my experience with the different steps of uh, the fully digitized indirect bonding. So my interest in this technique has arised uh, because uh, I wrote a chapter about digital orthodontics. And while I was writing that chapter, I came across this new technology of uh, fully digitized indirect bonding. This technique uh, would allow us to use the latest technology in placing the brackets on a virtual model and after that to 3D print the trays and take it into the patient's mouth without the needing to print any plaster models at all. So let me share with you how was the process. So initially, uh, of course, I have to send an impression uh, to the lab, or also you can send an intraoral scan of the teeth and the opposing jaw in order to check the occlusion. And then um, the lab was informed about what kind of brackets I want to use. So in this case, I was using the uh, 3M MBT prescription victory series low profile 022 brackets. So you have to be very specific with what kind of brackets because at the end of the day, the brackets have to fit into the tray that you will use. So the computer has to know exactly what are the dimensions of these brackets and specification. So this is uh, this was uh, our brackets and then the usually the software would decide where to put the brackets based on the FA point, which is usually dictated to be the middle of the tooth in all dimensions. And then um, I was uh, able to have a look and to connect remotely with the technician in order to go over the bracket positioning and to confirm exactly that they are exactly where I want. Because as many people know, and mainly my students, they know that I am very particular about bracket positioning because bracket positioning is the key to a proper case finish. So we always have to start with the finish in mind. So the bracket positioning has to be very good and in the perfect position to give a nice smile, good marginal ridges and good occlusion. And maybe I will record a separate video about the proper bracket positioning on a later date. So the software that was used here was called Ortho Analyzer from 3Shape. And uh, when I connected remotely with a technician, we were able to go over a couple of brackets. Like for example, this one seems to be a little bit more distal on this tooth here, as well as we can see that this canine is also more distal. Uh, so I asked him to move it a bit more mesial because also this will not help with the wire engagement between the teeth it's too close so i asked him to do that and then uh, i was able to confirm as well the heights and the mesiodistal and the long axis from different views and we did a couple of changes of course and then after that and what was really really interesting for me to do is the software allows you to run different wires in the teeth and be able to see what kind of alignment you will get. So it's kind of showing you your bracket positioning if it will lead to a proper alignment. And that is so priceless for me. It was so interesting. From that, you will choose what kind of wires you want. So you are given different options to pick from in terms of wire sizes. You can choose night tie, you can choose stainless steel, TMA, and also the different sizes, whether you want to run around, rectangular, and different rectangular um, you know, sizes, as well as the arch shape. So you can choose normal and wide or uh, narrow, whatever you want. So for me, it was very interesting, and I felt that this would be a beautiful learning tool also for my students. Uh, if we can have access to this software so that they can do a virtual bracket positioning exercise and then we run the wire and see whether they have, you know, they can learn how to perfect their bracket positioning, not on a real patient, but on a model. We will see how we can develop this in the future. 
Anyhow, so when we run this wire, we were able to see and confirm that we are getting a proper alignment of the teeth. And this is beautiful because then it tells us that these brackets will lead to a perfect alignment. And this will confirm, uh, you know, that we can proceed with the trays that hopefully this will give us this result. And we can check it also from different sides, from the side, you know, from how it will be between the wires. Of course, we will not jump into this wire in immediately in reality, but we are talking that when we reach to this wire, whatever you choose to be the heaviness, it will lead to a proper alignment. After that, we confirm we have a final look at our brackets. We confirm we do minor changes if we like. And also the software will be able to tell us how many millimeters every uh, the, every bracket is in which tip and in and out and the distance. And even it can tell us how much IPR we might need to be able to fit the teeth. Although this is not the real idea of this uh, exercise, but it's mostly the bracket positioning. After that, we finalize the design of the trays that will be used for the indirect bonding. Now, of course, the more coverage, the more coverage we have about the uh, of the bracket, the better the fit and the less effort we have to do in order to push it. But the cleaning of the glue will be an issue. And this is always my concern that we don't have access to clean before we cure. And then I'm afraid that we will end up needing to clean a lot of the glue with the burr after the fact. So uh, I ask them here to kind of cover, but leave for me a little area around the bracket to be able to clean up the extra glue. And as I will show you in the next steps, we decided to use the uh, pre-pasted brackets from 3M because they usually come with a pink uh, a glue, you know, the, the cement that we can see and also before we cure. And also it's usually just the right amount, kind of like we call it the bread and butter technique where you just put just enough. And um, the nice thing about these trays here is that they are 3D printed themselves. So they don't need to be printed uh, uh, on the, uh, we don't need to print, I mean, the cast with the brackets and then do a suck down. The newest technology would allow the 3D printer to print this tray immediately from this design without needing to have another uh, 3D printed model to do a suck down on it. So for here, we confirm the plan, we confirm the design of our tray and then I ask them to send me the tray cut in three pieces, mainly here from K9 to K9 to be one piece, and then a four, five, six to be one piece, you know, so that it will be easier for me to have it in and out and uh, without any problems. So after you confirm with the lab um, that you are happy with everything, you will receive a box that has the trays so here they have given me the casts and they uh, as a courtesy they have given me this indirect bonding uh, bracket kind of cast 3d printed with the brackets that we planned not really needed but kind of a nice courtesy from them as well as the final one that we have seen uh, on the computer. What really I needed was these. Uh, and as I said, I asked them to make them in three pieces so that it will be easier for me to manage them, um, you know, during the bonding. So uh, on the day of bonding, uh, we started, of course, first with the isolation. I usually like to use the NOLA retractor because it has this tongue piece that would have a suction in it. So this will ensure excellent, excellent isolation, which is extremely important for bonding. So as usual, we start with the etching, wait for around 15, 20 seconds, 
and then wash and dry. Here I was putting the tongue piece. As I said, it's extremely important because it will remove all the saliva and entrap the tongue, which is usually uh, give us hard time during the bonding of the lower. Next, I started to load the trays with the brackets, the pre-pasted brackets from 3M. And to be honest, it was there was a bit learning curve for me to be able to place them inside without uh, them falling or without me touching the paste. It was easier when I tried with the non-pasted brackets because I was able to push from the back. But here, when I was pushing from the back, I was kind of touching the paste. But it wasn't as bad, but probably I could be more efficient and faster next time uh, doing it. Probably I will load all three trays even to begin before I start. But here I was doing kind of one quadrant at a time. So here we were ready with the tray. I dried one more time, we put bonding and we cured as usual. Here now I was loading this tray. So I placed it and we cured. I was cleaning actually the glue, as I said, the pink one would show, uh, but I have to kind of press from the buckle to be able to seed the brackets 100%. And then I clean the glue and then we light cure. And then I went to the next quadrant where I put the tubes and the tubes are not pre-pasted. So I needed to paste these. Here I was removing the tray from the other, uh, from the front ones because the other tray wouldn't fit. They would uh, interfere. The removal was not extremely easy because it looks like some of the glue has um, become cured to the to the tray. So it wasn't very hard, but it wasn't extremely uh, easy. So I had to use the scaler to kind of get it out. A little bit. And then we moved on with this other side on the lower right quadrant. Now here to put pressure from the buckle wasn't easy with the Nola because um, there's not a lot of space for my fingers to go inside and to make sure we push properly and yet be able to clean. So I would say the challenging thing for me was to clean the glue from the buckle side. It wasn't as easy as the front, but I thought the most important is to make sure I push it very well. And then we did the same thing with the other side. And here we are, all finished, all good. And that's it.